Hi everybody, it's Dan from PI Engineering and what I want to talk about this time is our XKeys NDI PTZ application. So what is NDI? If you don't know what NDI is, you've probably been living under a rock for the last couple of years. That's all anybody's talking about, especially in the streaming community. It is a protocol for transmitting video over IP and then recently they added to that protocol a set of PTZ commands that you can send to an NDI camera, uh, an NDI PTZ camera to do positioning and other things. And we thought this is a great idea. So we developed an application for that uh, that can see up to four NDI cameras and send PTZ commands to them. And it can talk to, surprise, surprise, an X keys. And what I have here is a, our XK68 with a joystick, which we think is the best one to use for this application. You can use any X keys for it because we made it that way, but uh, you know we think this is the best way to go. So let's uh, let's dive in here. Uh, you do you have to get um, Nutex NDI tools and get those installed before you install our app because we use parts of those and then uh, get the app from us which you can do we're beta testing it and you can can uh, participate in that beta test if you'd like by sending us an email to tech at xkeys.com and we'll send you a download link uh, and you need an x keys to to send the commands but um, here it is i've uh, i've installed it and i've launched it and what we have here is the joystick showing up um, if I have other X keys plugged in, they are also going to show up here and you select the one that you want to control the app. In each of these camera windows, we see the NDI sources that are on our network. So there's a PTZ Optics camera that I have going. Uh, here is the NewTek NDI camera. It's another one I have going. And if you notice, uh, we've got our laptop display because uh, it's also an NDI source. That's how I'm bringing it into vMix for this recording. And you also notice that we have a tally here showing us that this one's in program. Um, that works on some sources, and my experience in testing, it's not been real reliable, but um, it, it may get more reliable over time. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, now we've, we've got our sources selected, and let's, uh, let's set up the X keys. I blanked this one out so we could start from ground zero. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, is get my camera set up. So here's the button for camera one. Um, let me back up for a second and just go over these segments of the, of the program here. Um, this area here is going to show me the button that I have selected, the key that I've selected uh, for, for programming. This is all of the PTZ functions that... Uh, that NDI reliably supports right now. Um, I assume this list will grow as they add some in. And these are filters, so that it's a lot easier to find exactly the selection, or the function that you're looking for as you're programming. Um, but it's just simply filtering that list down to, to some things we think you want. Over here, um, this thing which is talking about joystick lower range. So if you have our joystick, it has two speeds and we've set it up in this app with two speeds in each direction so partially in is going to be the slow speed all the way over to one side or another up or down is going to be the max speed what we're doing here is allowing you to set what that minimum the low speed is going to be if you need something in your application that's really really accurate and you just want minimal movements when you do that you can turn the speed way down if you need to go faster, you can crank it up. And we also let you choose different speeds for pan and tilt because you may be in a, you know, in many instances, you want to be able to pan quickly, but you don't need to tilt and you may not want to tilt. Uh, so you could set this all the way down so that you're not tilting by accident. Over here is something new uh, with this iteration I just started playing with. This is a backlight control. So if you see, we can select either red or blue, and we can select the intensity, which is kind of cool. Um, and then the other feature of that I'll show you in a minute when we select our cameras. So that lets you do that. You can play around. You can see immediately on the unit what it's doing. 
Now, let's go back to the keys that I started to, to talk about. I'm going to select this one for camera one. This shows me that it's been selected and that there's nothing on it right now. Now, if I double click this select camera number, it's going to jump to the first one available, which is camera one. That's what I want for this key. And then for camera two, I click the key. This says nothing assigned yet. I double click and the program automatically increments up one. But if you have do things in a different order or for some reason want them differently, you can change it right here. Uh, now I'm going to three, double click, and I've got camera three, four, double click, and I've got camera four assigned. So they're my four camera selection keys for those sources. You can also do next or previous if you want a key where you can just cycle through the sources that you have and monitor them. I think that's kind of a leftover from uh, the security days. Uh, let's see, let's now go to this key, which is set preset and is going to allow us to, uh, to set our, record our presets. And if I hit the preset filter here, I hit that key, double click set preset. This is a double key, so I'm actually going to hit, there's two switches under here. I'm going to hit them both and set them both to set preset because that won't hurt anything. Uh, there are other instances with a wide key where you wouldn't want to do that because you don't want to fire off two things at the same time, but I think it's safe to do that here. Okay, so now my preset numbers. I'm going to hit preset one up here. Double click, there's one, two, double click. And again, you can see we're automatically incrementing for you to make this setup go a little faster. Six is good enough for this demo. Uh, what... I have here this is this key is is a new function that I really like uh, it's called zoom to joy or zoom joy Y excuse me so I press that key and here's my zoom joy Y feature and I'm going to show you about that in a in a minute here we go on uh, this key I have is called zoom 50% and if I take this uh, zoom slower function here this is full speed zoom, and this one allows me to lower it in increments from one to five. It's a multiplier, so at 0.5, it's going to be going at 50%. Let's see. I, no, I can't remember. Did I hit that key? I almost re reprogrammed this one. I'm going back to my Zoom Joy Y key, setting that one. Zoom 50%, zoom slower, set to 0.5. I'm good. Zoom 10%. I want the zoom slower function at point 0.1. This is pan and tilt. This does a similar thing to multiply those down. Uh, that's at 50%. This is at 10%. I must have set those up before. Over here, I have, I call, it's called the zero zoom key, which means it's going to pull everything all the way out. And here's our zero zoom function. This is pan and tilt home, which is going to bring the camera back to dead center. Okay, so I have those set up. I have more keys on here. Um, these are white balance keys for the various PTZ white balance commands that we can send. Uh, these are keys for controlling what happens in the program. Yeah, we got time. I'll show you how those work. Uh, this one is called crosshairs. I hit this and it's under the display uh, and crosshair is the function. Show hide. Uh, this is single to multi view and this is full screen and these just all affect the view how this uh, how the program gets displayed on the screen uh, these are kind of cool this is uh, focus plus minus autofocus and autofocus pause uh, I think we've seen these live productions where you have somebody talking and they put their hand up in front of their face and the camera autofocuses on their hand and they go out of focus and that's really annoying. Uh, if you get a situation like that where you want the autofocus to freeze, you just hit that button and we, we freeze it until you go to another preset or, or do something else. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, that is under camera adjustment. And that was my autofocus pause. And there's autofocus, which will refresh it. Focus plus, focus minus. And we've pretty much got this thing set up. We're all done. We click finished. And now uh, 
if you notice now, it's not working is what you notice. Let's go back to this setup camera one. Uh, I've seen this bug with this program sometimes. The initial times the programming doesn't take, which is annoying. It's beta. It's a bug. Uh, let's try that again. Finished. Now they're working. Okay. I better check my presets and other stuff that we programmed on there because that would be really annoying if they didn't work. And yes, they didn't get saved, and that is really annoying. So I'm just going to blast through here and set them up again. Six presets is good. Did my set preset. No, that didn't get set either. Okay, that's good. How about my... Hey, what do you know? Is only the, the Y key stayed. Uh, zero zoom did not. And pan tilt home did not. Let's try that again. Okay, you guys are working. Let's try preset one. That's working. So now I can select camera, select preset, select another camera, send that to a different preset. I'm not sure why this one's being real laggy. It is. Um, and again, I don't have this optimized. If I was going to optimize it, I would set all my NDI sources up on the same network and have nothing else on them. Um, we're, we just jammed it into our office network here. And it's working, but it has a few little quirks like that. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, this is a fun feature I wanted to show you. And we'll take this. Full screen, maybe. Oh, I forgot. It forgot the programming on those. That's okay. We'll go back in here and do it real quick. Uh, that was our display. Here's crosshair. Here's I'd show. That's my single multi view. That's my full screen. They all look good. Finished. Let's try now. Yeah, there's the crosshair. Uh, there's the full screen. And so what I wanted to show you was that, you know, if you're, if you're using, we can zoom with our little absolute Z control here, but it's not the best. Now this um, zoom to Y function, if I hold this key that I programmed down here, now my Y axis is the zoom. So I can zoom around, I can move around, you know, uh, or I can jump to a preset. But I really like the control feels much better, much more like a real zoom when I'm using that feature and I'm not uh, not panning and tilting around at the same time. It's it's all good. It all works. Um, let's go to zero zoom all the way out. We'll go to home on the pan and tilt. And then we were pretty close anyway. And mess around. Uh, now, a couple things you may notice that this has a really low flame, frame rate. And if you look at, you know, I've got that, that's right, I set that tilt way down. So if I'm just barely moving it, it's not moving. Um, this has a, a really low frame rate on the display because we wanted to keep it using as few resources as possible. And so one way of doing that is just bringing the frame rate really, you know, way down. So we're maybe only sending one frame a second or something like that. Um, because we feel like that's that's enough that you can control it and still see what's happening on the uh, camera. Um, but you don't need, you know, high speed, um, no blur kind of imagery on that when you're trying to control it. So that is uh, an overview of our NDI PTZ application. Uh, it's been fun, and thanks for watching, and you know how to get a hold of me if you have any questions. Well, that's me again right there. That's, yeah, Dan, that's me. Um, thanks again. There's a button I want.